Hello and welcome to Scrapbooking Station. In my last release, we talked about creating cards using a sentiment and cluster design. And I did talk to a layout, so I put together a layout. I want to do a spring layout this time, starting at the very beginning, using the same design. So that's why it's called Title and Cluster. So I'm going to put the camera over my shoulder and we'll get started. So here's the card front that I'm going to use to create my scrapbook layout. I work in 12 by 12, but the elements that I want to make sure I've got is first off this back panel or my page with a strong border element coming across. Then I've got another panel here. Of course, I want to make room for my photographs, but I want the sentiment, or in this case, in my case, the title, to be across here and then some sort of cluster element. So let me move this out of the way, back up, and we'll take a look at the colors. So these are the two photographs that I'm going to feature in my layout, and so I've picked out or made some choices with patterns and color. So the, the base of my scrapbook is going to be this pattern, and it's kind of a worn wood, white, and chocolate. I want to throw in two colors, and so I've got a green and a bright yellow, and I always want to have a couple neutrals prepared. So I've got this uh, early espresso, deep chocolate brown, and white to kind of bring back some of that. For my pattern papers, what I've done is printed out some larger images of the plants that I'm featuring. So I've got some spring color in here. I've got this piece that I want to use for border elements. And then I've got this piece in case I need some matte and layering or even for journaling. If I want to pop in some actually really bright sparkly paper. So as accents, I'm, probably, I'm going to be using this. And then I've always got some pearls to add into my cluster. So let me move this out of the way. I'll cut up some of these pieces and then start putting together the actual specifics of the layout. Okay, I don't get too far along without starting to take a look at some layers. So I've got my border pieces pretty much put down. Across here, again, I'm going to have this photo that's going to come like this. And then I've got that top panel that's going to go like this. Now before I put, like I said, put too much down, I think what I'm going to do is leave this like this. And I've got the mat for that centerpiece. I'm going to layer this on top of here like so. And then lastly, stick this piece in. So once I get all that down there, that's the basics of my scrapbook layout. So now I want to start taking a look at some of the embellishments. And the first of those is going to be a title. So I've got some letters, and I'm going to create shadows to make them stand out a little bit. But what I'm going to say is spring. So I've got those, and what, I'm going to, what I've got prepared is just like a little demo on how to create these letters, because they're really great. They're kind of an ombre look, but they're shiny, which is going to kind of bring in or um, complement my photographs. So let me put some of this down, and then we'll take a look at that. So I've set up my little workspace, and I'm just going to use this letter O as an example, because I've already done my spring letters. But there's two things I want to make sure I don't do, and one of them is crease the letter, and the second is get my fingerprints uh, green with ink, and then end up getting this top portion of the O. So this is going to be the bottom, this is going to be the top, and I want that top to stay somewhat pristine. So I'm going to use the scrap piece of paper, kind of hold it down as I'm putting on ink. And I just want to gently, really want to start at the bottom. Again, I don't want to crease it. I'm going to start light at first, kind of move up. I want to try and keep it square because I want the ombre to kind of move up my letter. So let me hold that down real good. And I'm going to go a little bit at a time, bring up some ink, go a little bit further, go a little bit further, always starting at the bottom and moving up. So I'm going to continue until I get the right shade. And then I've got one last thing to do at the end. So I've got it looking like I want to. And the last thing I want to do is come up both sides this way because I want to try and get rid of any horizontal lines on the letter. You gotta really hold it down. The other thing is this cardstock, the, the color of the cardstock I used is a shade lighter than the ink I'm using and that's just to make the effect a little bit more pronounced. Okay, now I'm ready to clear emboss. So I've got my Versamark ink pad and I'm just going to turn this upside down. I want to make sure I get a really good coat of Versamark. I just do it this way so I don't get any Versamark on my 
uh, craft paper there. It's just a little easier. Give it a good tamp. And you want to just kind of pick it up. Throw in some of your embossing powder. Tamp that off. Okay, I just had to run and go get my tweezers. Because now I want to pick it up. I really don't want to pat it too much because I want a nice thick layer. And I've got it on this piece of paper. I'm going to turn on my heat gun. And that's so it's nice and hot when I put it on against the letter or over the letter. And that's just so it doesn't warp as much. And that's a little tip and trick. That if you make sure that your heat gun is really heated, you're not going to have it um, curve so much. And I made like a little pocket to hold it into. Let me go grab that, and I'm going to start from the underside. Kind of heat things up a little bit. And then come right over it. Okay, and that's all there is to it. I just think that's a really neat look for your scrapbook titles because you've got photos that have that glossy on photo, glossy photo paper so this is consistent. Okay, we'll be back to the layout. Once the title is finished, of course I'm putting it down and the other thing I want to do is le kind of leave this open because I want to layer this up. Kind of unusual in that my embellishments are these flower stacks and I'm keeping them simple shaped and simple colors because this layout is so busy. Of course you can get your photos in. I've got an area here for my journaling. So I've stacked a couple of these up and all I'm going to do is kind of position. I kept this G off so that I can kind of slide one under there. Maybe down a little bit farther. Something under that last letter. So I cut out some leaves and these dies I tried out several. So picked out the two greens that I've got in my title kind of do this and I'm just going to keep on layering until I've simplified this layout a little bit which is kind of unusual. So I want to talk about some of these materials. I didn't talk about the band that I put under there. It's actually a cutting die. It's this one. It's called Two Lacy Borders from Paper Wishes and it's done with paper twine cording which I use an awful lot because it's thin and so I can double it up and make 14 inch 21 inch strip using that material. Then I've got some nested flowers that I'm using for the flower pieces and I found these two leaves. Of course my title is these large letter framelits from Stamping Up. I use them all the time for my scrapbooking but at home decor also. So if you do home decor projects. So I've always got my season up and I'm always almost always using those letters. Okay so those are the materials. I'm going to finish this up and then I'll be back with the finished page. And this is my finished layout. So adding the solid and simple shaped cluster really softened that corner. So kind of crossing over some of the busier patterns. So again, really nice. Now let me bring back the uh, original inspiration. So you see where I've got my border elements. I've got the title instead of the sentiment. And of course I've got a little extra cluster here for my journaling. I did move my photos kind of off the panel and that's just for a little bit of more balance on a 12 by 12. Now what's interesting and why I'm going to go ahead and show you a card is I posted this design as a challenge on the message board and someone came up with the notion that this is really good for your odds and ends they called them. Well, I call them leftovers so and that's really true. Plus since I showed a scrapbook land on my last video I'll go ahead and show this card. So. Again, just kind of using leftovers, changed the colors up a little bit, made it a little bit lighter for spring, and then just a little cluster on the inside. Anyway, I sure hope you took something with you you can use in your own scrapbooking, and I thank you for watching.